Okay. And let's get us on Facebook. So hello, everyone. Oh, like Talia okay. is with okay. us. Hi, Talia. Okay, so let's get this shared to Facebook Live, share to a page. All right, hello, everybody coming in. Just bear with us. We're just live streaming. All right, we are live on Facebook and we have our attendees in here. And so welcome, welcome, welcome to this fireside chat with Omri Mann from Anchor. And Anchor, I am extremely excited um, about Anchor. Not only did we realize that it was Kismet because my hair is purple and one of their colors is purple, um, but I'm just really, really excited um, to be working with them and the, the solutions that they can the problems they can solve for us. So let's dig right in. Just tell us a little bit about yourself first off, Omri, and your background before you tell us about Anchor. Tell us about yourself first. First of all, thank you for having me and thank you for everybody joining. I hope that we can, you know, in the short time we have to add some value to your life. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur since I can remember myself. Uh, this is uh, I think my fourth uh, business that is considered a real business if you're not counting me trading allowance with my sister when I was young. Um, and all through the businesses that we had, the major pain that I had very consistently is chasing payments, is doing uh, a proper work for my clients. And then still ending up on the phone uh, like oh the, the info oh you didn't oh I'll send the invoice again sure oh you're in a ski vacation oh yeah have fun so these type of conversation drove me crazy and, and really made me feel a little bit like a mouse in some cases and we are this is me and you know my partners all had the similar experience and decided that it doesn't make sense this has to change uh so we created anchor to to actually change that Awesome. Awesome. And you're a serial entrepreneur um, dealing with this. And that runs in your family as well, too. We don't have to bring up any any of the names of your brother, but uh, your brother does the same thing as well, too. So you're basically, you and your brother started a tech company as well, too, that you sold out. So, so well, if, sold, not sold out, that you sold uh, to a bigger company. All right. If we're talking about, so the foundation is we started, me and my brother started, um, uh, website creation system similar to what you might know as Wix. Uh, so we started that in 2007 um, and ended up selling that. My brother became the CTO for Wix and then started uh, Monday.com, actually was the founder and still the CEO. So uh, right now, that is the trajectory, I think, of Anchor as well, is building something that is significant and that can actually make a dent uh in the world so he's helping streamline and managing a lot of projects i hope okay. to streamline uh billing and finance and getting paid uh yeah. you know making our mom proud awesome that's no that's amazing um and so anchor obviously people have i'm sure gotten into this that it is now a payment now one thing that we hear all the time there's so many payment solutions out there you've got square you've got this you've got that you've got all this other stuff what is it that that you feel and then i can jump in because i know i've been in the product i will let you guys know i've been in the product i've been working with it it is currently um for canadians we can use it in certain ways in the states um but it is mostly all us so when we talk about things that are coming that's mostly for us in canada um but omri is very happy to work with me and i am very happy to work with him because it's so exciting but from your standpoint omri what is it that 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 really makes you feel that that this is different what are you doing different than the other payment providers out there payment solutions so I completely agree on the, there's multiple, not only payment solutions, but solutions at large. I think that even, you know, when we're talking and when you were going to all the conference, the buzzword is what's your tech stack, meaning what accumulation of software do you need to assemble so that your business will actually function? And then we try to 
you know, mash it together with Zapier and duct tape, and that normally doesn't really work. And so, the, first of all, the, the first difference is it, there's no silos. Uh, we looked at the problem as a whole and decided for, for us to actually solve it, we need to touch on all the stages from meeting a client until he's being paid repeatedly. So, uh, and, and we'll jump to that maybe a bit later about how we actually go about it. But the main difference is, one, there's no silos. So that enables the automation to be complete and mm -hmm. you don't need to validate anything because it's in the same system. So payments and so that's a big thing. And the other thing is that the system understands that your business is very dynamic. Uh, you talk to a client, they say, yeah, this is the scope of work. It's really limited. You give them a price. And then when you actually open the hood, you discover there's a major cleanup and it's like triple the work. And then normally what happens is that you have a certain engagement letter or agreement and it doesn't represent it. So you just, we cater to something that facilitates those changes so that you still have a binding agreement that creates automation, but you don't let that go. So I would say all in one solution that you don't need other softwares. Uh, and the second one is that uh, it's flexible and keeps the automation no matter what business differences you have. Well, and the one thing that, that I love and that I wouldn't have known looking at your website, um, cause it doesn't really do it justice that it's an all in one solution. It, you know, you focus on the receivables. And I thought that was interesting when you and I spoke and said, you focused on the receivables and went backwards. So when you and I first spoke, it was, you know, I use the word and I'm not going to use them right now. I'm sure everybody's going to know who we're talking about, but there was another company out there. And I said, that to me was kind of what you're doing, but you're like, but yes, we did it backwards. So there's a company that started offering engagements and then added from the engagements, added pricing or sorry, added the, the receivable you've worked backwards. So you've got the engagements in there are very simple, but they can sign the engagements, but you're focused more on receiving and the rest of it is very simple very simple and it is and guys i have already used this we've tested it out internally and we have already used it on one of our um media sponsors i don't i'm not going to say their name because i don't know that they want their name say, uh, said but they are a very very large company at all of the conferences i would say next to qbo they are the second largest um and that we actually use with our QBO files and their feedback was that was really easy. So I, I want to like I'm, I'm listening to our conversation. I'm listening to our conversation and um, um, my hallucination is that I don't think we've explained enough what it does. I would love to share a slide just to the Please people do. listening yes. to understand. Uh, I need the ability to access that. So first of all, yeah. what Anchor does as a title is automate uh, billing and collections. And in order to do that, we are starting from the agreement stage or the uh, proposal stage and then uh, streamline everything. So if I would need to just show you guys how it's done, let's... And we will be getting more into this on a webinar that we're doing later on this month, guys. So we'll have more details on this, absolutely. <laughs> Tanya, are you, are you able to see the screen? Yes, we can see the screen. All right, wonderful. So jumping right in, basically, uh, instead of you having a DocuSign, a Panda Doc, uh, a Word or whatnot to send your engagement letter, and then you're duplicating the concept of paper just in a digital form, we said that in order to actually streamline billing, we need to start at the foundation, at the proposal stage. And instead of doing something that's paper-like, we actually do something that is more, more coming from the world of SaaS and e-commerce, where it's completely, that's your like billing uh, portal within your software. So what you would do instead of sending a PDF or uh, a like PDF uh, solution, you'll send a link with your own cool branding to your client. And instead of what we're used to, normally we add a lot of text and a lot of trying to convince our clients that yeah, we're so big and you know we have this big company and we'll give you an amazing service, which is good thing to do. But we feel that on the engagement, we should just shift the order, meaning our clients want 
they want you know to get things done quickly so for them they want their bottom line first they spoke with you sort of they understand the pricing the first thing that they're looking to do is see that what you told them is what is in the engagement letter or the agreement so they tend to like scroll really quickly all the words fluff terms and get to the pricing which we normally hide in small letters we just said this is counterproductive for them to sign quickly so it's bottom line first really really simple the same things that you see in e-commerce they understand how much they need to pay us what are the terms what are we giving them and what we're expecting of them and then the terms go actually beneath so that makes it super easy for them to sign we were seeing the conversion from receiving it to paid uh it's within minutes and anyone tried it it lifted the conversion by dozens of percentage so like i think the average is around 43 percent uh faster conversion and then the minute that they sign the screen flips and we're asking them for their payment information so it could be a credit card or an ach connection the ach is completely free for everybody and the default is that the client is paying the fee for the credit card under the assumption that we're providing them uh, or you're providing them with a very good free solution. So if they want their miles or points, they can definitely have access to that. But the default is that they take the charge. After that happens, you're rendering your wonderful service and the invoice is being populated and generated automatically directly from the agreement so that you don't need to do it. That's one thing. There's no mistakes with going back to the agreement and then passing that information. And your client knows that there's no surprises because if he signed an agreement that says it's $1,000, the invoice will be $1,000. And then there's, they trust your invoices. Once that invoice is generated, uh, basically around what you decide as the vendor, it's being automatically paid as well. As long as it's within the range of the terms that was, were agreed, the payment goes through to your bank and being reconciled automatically with QuickBooks. So in solution, we have a process that starts from a proposal, a signed agreement, collecting the payment method, automating the invoicing, sending it, populating it, everything actual payment sending you the money and reconciling it so we took a lot of things that right now there's a lot of different pieces of software that everybody are using and trying to melt to melt together so we took all of that and basically created a solution that automates it so you can actually put it in the back so you don't need to deal with that uh, so yeah. the i think the nicest thing we've heard about this is send it and forget it uh, people just talk to their clients they push it and then they know that we'll take care of them getting paid and if there's any issue with the card or with anything then we'll actually either take care of it automatically and engage with the client reminding them or escalate it directly to you but it's we're trying to keep it at that middle minimum minimum so that it will work flawlessly and some questions that may come to mind or when we created these are the questions that we asked so First of all, how do clients react to this? Because they're, you know, they're used to uh, paying me with the paper checks, or they're used to uh, abuse me at the end of the month and telling me they're in a ski vacation. Uh, and what we've seen is is astonishing. So new clients, zero questions, zero friction to just come in and do exactly as you instruct them to do. And for existing clients, the process is quite different. It's not we don't need you like really regenerate agreements again you're just sending them an update to a new billing system and it flows really well so clients friction is really a non-issue and the other thing is actually changing so what if you know i didn't complete it or what if there's milestones or what you know a lot of things that normal systems and this is where i feel we we differ they they keep you segmented okay we said a thousand dollars and now i discover it's you know two thousand i need to either erase my old agreement resend that proposal or the engagement letter with us it's just you just change the amount or add a service hit click the your client will receive it and just uh, yeah, okay approve the minute they hit approve it's becoming a binding part of your engagement letter and will be executed at the end of the month or at the next billing cycle according to what you said so i hope that clears things a little bit 
Well, it does. And we've got some questions coming in. But before we get to those questions, um, what I want to verify is a couple of things too. So currently, how this works and my process and anybody who knows me knows I automate as much as I can. I also have a balance between quality and quantity. Um, quant quality is utmost importance, but if I can get the same quality with, you know, a lower quantity, so, you know, price point, I will do things, but if we've got to look at the overall picture. So currently my process is Leanne talks to them. We come up with the pricing. I go into Proposify. I manually do this change. It's very pretty, all of this stuff, which by the way, there is still a way I can get my pretty brochure in here with the terms and conditions instead of using their terms. So I can still get my pretty brochure if I want. So I do that, send it out, people then sign it. Then we have to say, okay, great. Now you've signed it. Now here we have to start collecting your banking information, which is a different system. So then we have to send them a different email with that. That takes time because maybe they didn't have time at that point or they had time at that point, but this email has to be then manually triggered by us down the road. They have to fill that in, send all that off. Then I, even though there is still a way to sync QuickBooks to Rotessa, if anything happens, I would really rather manually. So now I'm manually entering the sales receipts, manually entering for my PAT agreements in Rotessa, and I have made mistakes. I have not updated the payment in one when I've updated in the other. I've had to go back and fix that. There's manual error because there's so many manual steps. This new way, this the our services are all in there. We go in, add the client, pick the services, hit send, and we're hands off. Everything else happens automatically, which is beautiful on that. There is a way to change as well as you said, Omri, the default is that the clients pay for the credit card. We can change that so that we can pay for the credit card. So that is an option that we can change and you can change that for every client when you go through. Um, so it, it absolutely changes the process. It means that Leanne can then do a lot of things which I have had control over because if there's going to be a mistake, I want to be the mistake. Leanne can do that because everything is pre-picked. She sends it off. There's nothing that has to be done that I am now taking the accountability for. So I love, love, love that. And, and you've got the options in there. The best thing is, and then we'll get to the questions, some of the questions shortly. Omri, tell us about revenue linkage. Because revenue leakage, and I know I talked to somebody about that over the weekend, and they had a completely different visual. So I know when I have to turn around and tell clients in their engagement letter, you're going to go up, you know, 3% every single year. And then COVID happens, or I get busy, and I forget to increase it. How do you solve that problem? You do have yeah. a solution for that, right? You take care oh. of that, right? We take care of it. We actually don't take care of it. The system takes care of it. If we had to do better. it, it will fail. So I think you touch on a very important and painful point that you started with. Just data segmentation and moving data around is a very, very easy place to just have errors. Uh, sometimes for against you, you forget to add it. Sometimes you add a different zero and we all have a maybe a story with charging another zero to something. Uh, and the other thing is exactly as you said, like you have an agreement in place that you say, I'm going to raise it in 3% and then that year ends and either you didn't write it and you forgot all about it and that's one revenue leakage or you actually looked at it and you said, ah, you know, you don't like the friction with talking to a client and raising the price and then you say, okay, let's waive it. But when you do that repeatedly and you or you add, you know, someone's calling you, okay, we have to do that. And it's out of scope. So you say, okay, you write it somewhere. And then when you build them, you forget all about it. So uh, there's actually a very, very good research done, done by Dan Bradstreet that illustrates that it accounts for over 4.6% out of uh, your bottom line uh, of profit. So that is very significant. It's a lot of money that we're basically just, you know, it's, leaking out of the system uh and i think that the proper way to handle that is not run away you're running around and actually looking for all those holes but automate it in a way that will ensure that you don't forget these things you don't need to even deal with them 
And most importantly, you're taking yourself personally out of the equation that stands between your payment and your client. Because normally you're you're becoming a collection agent. And, you know, it's, it's, it's friction. Like the m most important thing we have is our clients and the relationship that, that, you know, we've been, we're working so hard to maintain over the years. And that always causes some friction. And we tend to just, I think we take the responsibility for it and then uh, we don't get paid. So I love for that to stop. Well, and I think the biggest thing is, and I know, that this happens here and I bet it happens with every single person that's watching and that is going to be watching this when it when we put the the recording out is that we're still paying more our subscriptions go up they send us an email saying here's the date your subscriptions are going to go up it happens you know or it usually just happens automatically I know you know something like that um if it's got built in the contract our team members we're paying them more because if I didn't turn around and give my team members a raise in three years or four years, they wouldn't still be here. They'd be coming to me for a raise. And, and if they have to come to you for a raise, you know, it, it's not really the best thing going on. But so you're paying out more, but you're not collecting that. So that is crucial that I think all of us are doing that. And that I loved, loved, loved when you told me about that. I'm like, hey, that is so simple and so easy. Um, and that's great. So some of the questions here. So Steve has asked about Canada, any ETA on the Canadian version. So right now, what we're working on, Steve, that I'll answer and then throw it back out to Omri, and it's been successful, is I'm a Canadian. I do have a U.S. bank account, and they've been able to successfully set me up. This was just last week that we've done this, so the money hasn't gone into my bank account yet. It should happen this week, but everything looks beautiful in the back end, and Stripe is currently... The back end processor. So you are using a large, reputable back end processor. So it's not like, you know, you're new and you're doing this. You're using Stripe in the back end now, but I am able to invoice people in US dollars. So I, um, the first one that we sent out was actually a Canadian company in US dollars because I do have a multi currency QBO account, and again my US bank account, and that so far is working through fine. I have absolutely no reason. Everything looks beautiful. It's just now waiting for the money to deposit is the only thing. But what then do you have, Omri, and, and potential ETA for that next version, which, guys, it'll be me working with Omri to make it come to Canada. So I'll make sure that, you know, everything is nice and beautiful. And we've got, I know, three or four other people, Omri, that have thrown their names in and said they would love to work with you as testers when you're ready to come to Canada for that. But have, do you guys have any ETA at this stage as to when? So, uh, I think the ETA is mostly depends on you. Uh, we uh, <laughs> uh, Seriously, until I met you. Put the pressure on me. <laughs> yeah, no. So, but uh, until I met you, I think uh, entering another market was something that we pushed a little bit off because we want to be very accurate with everything we do. And so the focus was very critical. But now that we have a partner that can guide us through that and shave off a lot of the mistakes that we can potentially do, we would love to, you know, relook at that and as fast as we can allow Canadians to participate, you know, with Anchor. Uh, so I think this is really up to you and me to to execute. The technology is really, really, really the same. It's just a matter of making sure that the the differences, and I know the Canadian system is a bit more uh, accurate or stringent in a way and that stringent. there's a few. Uh, yeah, yeah stringent is uh, so, a better word. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so I, I think we need to do just make sure that we're we're doing it properly and not jumping in. But the intention is definitely there and definitely faster than what we anticipated uh, before. So in the upcoming year for sure, and hopefully in the next few months, if we'll discover it's there's not a lot of heavy lifting in the difference between the U.S. and Canada. It shouldn't be. We do have our Canadian Payment Association rules that, you know, have to work around. But I think you were saying, I mean, we do have Stripe does work. I do believe there's Stripe Canada. I don't use Stripe, um, but I do believe that there's a Stripe Canada. And then you were also saying that you've got a partner. One of your investors mm. actually has another one that's globally, which would make it easier 
to move to oh, yeah, that definitely. platform so for processing, correct? One of our investors is a company called Rapid. Rapid are one of the largest uh, payment processors in the world. They're the one, they're like Stripe, only international. So they're processing the likes of Uber and Facebook outside of the US. And they have a tremendous network. And a big part of why we uh, chose them as an investor is because they have really interesting technologies that we can actually incorporate into our product and definitely go globally to every currency in every country. Uh, but I, you know, I don't have ETAs for, for Steve on that, uh, Obviously, but, yeah. <laughs> but definitely the, the objective of the company is to be a, a massive global company that will make a dent. Uh, so we need to be everywhere in terms of uh, geolocations. Well, and let's just jump back. So there's still a few questions that are coming over on Facebook. Um, and so we've got Leanne monitoring all those questions. So thank you. I just want to jump back. The one thing we haven't talked about pricing yet, like yes. we haven't talked about pricing yet. Um, so your pricing is very simplistic and that's what I love about it. So do you want to share what the pricing is? Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> it's simple. It's $5 per payment received, uh, flat, no percentage, uh, no subscription at this stage, no minimums, no commitments, pay as you go concept where we want to align ourselves completely with your interest using the system, meaning that if you're being paid by anchor, so the invoice is $1,000, we will then after you get the money or when you get the money, you will get 995. So we deduct that sum only when you get the money. It's meaning that, so basically it's free to use until you get paid. Uh, the agreement and proposals are free, uh, sending that those requirements, invoicing, everything is free up to the point that you actually get paid. Uh, and this is where we align our interest. And we wanted to keep it very, very simple and lower the barriers for smaller businesses to actually participate in this. Because the way that technology, especially in the fintech space, the way it goes is the best technology or the soonest goes to the enterprise level because they can pay the most and it's strategic for companies and the way that VCs are funding startups and technologies caters to that. And after that is consumers. We all are, you know, we're using Venmo. We're seeing such a big difference in how we, you know, Apple Pay and they're like everything is so easy. And then when it comes to small businesses, they have a tendency to be the last to be uh, served. Uh, and we wanted to change that. And um, we're starting with the small businesses. This is our priority. Uh, and then down the line, uh, we will you know go up market. But right now, uh, for the foreseen future, it's only small businesses. And a big part of it is pricing, is lowering the, I think, any friction or things that can distance people from actually trying something that can really change their business. So lowering those bridges so that they can actually just try it out. If it works, it works for them. And if it doesn't, they didn't go in and invest a lot of time or effort or money into testing something that could be really meaningful. Yeah, well, and I, it's funny, I think the timing for this, and I'm just going to call this out here, because I know lots of people in here, especially the Canadians have seen this this past weekend, the timing for this is great, and hopefully we can get you to market for Canada um, much sooner, and I will do everything I can to, to try to get that soon, because there are currently, especially with the cross-border, there are other solutions that have just this past weekend taken a large increase. One used to be a paper use. I used it several times um, a year, not a whole lot. And now it's $18.99 a month, just out of the bank account for something I only use a few times a year. Another one went from $25 a month up to $32 a month just for the platform and dropped the usage. So this is where I think this is going to be a big interest right now. I'm not sure how it's hit on the US side of the border with these companies, but on the Canadian side, and this is where I know the Canadians will really be interested. Um, and anybody who's been on Kelly's page, the workflow watering hole will know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but what I love about the pricing and this, and I have had somebody say to me, well, $5, Tanya, Rotessa is cheaper. It's true. Rotessa, I pay just shy of $30 a month for my Rotessa. That pulls out $20,000 a month automatic. But if you guys notice how much manual I had to do beforehand, I absolutely will move and will pay $5 per 
per payment because that is so easy to put into my budget. I don't have to sit down and add a percentage. It is $5, that's it, flat $5. It's so easy. And then everything is automated. So the time that it is going to save, the revenue leakage itself, it'll take care of it on that side, you know, let alone the, the elimination of the manual entries. And again, it's just, it's so simple. And I love that you guys have done that. And I love that you guys are working with the small business and, and I love the conversations we've had that I will leave it up to you if you want to share with the audience as to what the, what it was like when you did try to go into, you know, the larger companies, which is where I completely believe that your focus is going to stay on the small business and not be like, okay, we're too big. Thanks, you guys. We're just going to start filling you lots and go away. I don't believe that you're going to do that at all. I believe your focus is going to stay in the small business. And, and I love that. When we started, when we mapped the market, there's definitely if something that you see is that the need exists across the board, whether it's a solopreneur, single, you know, uh, person that's doing their business all the way to, you know, the largest corporations, everybody are having one of two challenges, either they're not being paid on time, or they have to put so much energy, effort and manual work into getting paid. And when we talk to them and say, wow, this is amazing. It can save us millions. So we would love to work with you. Here is, you know, our compliance Bible and, you know, good luck with that. So that's one. But the other thing is for me personally, I think I've been relatively fortunate to be successful at an early stage. Uh, and the reason that I do what I do is I want to impact people, less companies. So, you know, it's definitely... You know, we'll get to that, but what makes me tick and the reason we've built that is to make a difference in, in people's businesses and allow them, you know, not to look at the end of the month. And although we talked about pricing and I think there's like our concept is to deliver exponential value. So that means if I'm taking $10, I need to save you at least 30 so that's the way that we're calculating it. And so we, if you go and actually investigate how much time it takes you and put, you know, a dollar amount on it, you know, take, if you have an admin doing that, she, you know, and split her time and understand how much of the time she's spending on chasing clients and, you know, doing all these mistakes. And those are non-billable hours. And this, at least the folks that we spoke to hate those because, you know, you pay to get paid and that doesn't make sense. You already done the work and now you're paying to get paid and those accumulate. So it's the time, uh, it's the revenue leakage, it's the mistakes. And more than anything, it's the bandwidth. The fact that you need to constantly have this in your mind of getting paid instead of having a clear mind uh, to build a proper business. On top of that, I think what I would argue is the most important thing is having a very, very solid business foundation. When you don't know how much money you're going to have at the end of the month, I'm not talking anticipating, like really knowing this is how much I'm going to have. You're able to build a lot taller when you don't know, like, okay, so will you hire more people or spend more on advertising if you don't know what's actually going to be in the end of the month? And if you can actually properly forecast month after month with really good accuracy, I think that as itself will contribute so much to how you conduct your business uh, and it won't be on a monthly or a few months basis, you'll be actually able to build a trajectory. Uh, and that is the most meaningful thing. And this is uh, tools and things that we'll continue to develop to give more and more abilities to a business to like in every single point in time to know exactly where they're standing financially and what are their opportunities, which of their clients are, you know, their golden clients that are generating most. So, so more and more tools to help you get paid more, but doing less. Uh, because there's so many things that automation can actually replace effort with. Uh, and this is the path we chose. Well, and the beautiful thing with this is like I tell anybody um, who goes through is once we get it figured out for us, how many of our clients can use this and again, make their financial situations better um, and getting to some of the, the comments and, and questions now is Sherry Lee has said bookkeepers are the last to be paid in the lineup of bill payments. And it's true. And as you've said, there's those, 
you know, awkward conversations. And this takes it right out. And when you and I first spoke, Omri, and it really connected with me, you said it's like basically taking this and turning it into the same type of thing as subscription payments from Netflix, from, exactly. you know, Netflix and Amazon Prime, you know, or your Amazon Music or anything like that. The money just comes out. The confidence is there that it's going to come out and it depersonalizes that, which allows us to do what we do. So better and good fences, make good neighbors and make great clients. Right. So uh, I completely agree. And yeah. I think like just in, in the um, accounting terms where the minute that your clients trust the invoice that you're sending them to be true, meaning that it wasn't uh, manually uh, generated with, you know, a lot of inputs and outputs that have, you know, been manually done, they can trust the invoice. And then much like you said, like Netflix, they can actually, instead of you sending your invoice and sending your clients to work, they need to go back to the agreement, check that, you know, it's actually what they agreed, like what AP is supposed to do. They check for fraud, they check for errors, mistakes. With Anchor, they don't have an AP process it's very much like an expense because they know that it's within scope. They know who's sending it. They know that, you know, it's what you agreed upon. They know everything. So they can just let it slide like exactly like an expense. They don't have their AB process and you don't have your AR process. You have it, but it's automated. Right. So that, I, that's the concept. Well, in the out of scope. So we didn't touch on that. And yes, Sherry, I promise I'm getting to your questions real soon here. We still have lots of time because um, they're great questions. So anybody else, please feel free to type those questions in there. But the great thing is, is if I'm talking to somebody and there's some out of scope work, that's also a very awkward conversation. The way that this is set up to be so easy, I could be speaking to a client saying, you know what, that is out of scope work. That is going to take this. They agree to it. While I'm still on the phone, I pull up Anchor because it's already, you know, in my pre-list of things and how many hours. And there, by the way, you can put in fixed price. You can put in hours. You can put in, you know, pre-approval of so many hours. So let's say I'm talking to a client and we're deciding to do something out of scope. I could say, okay, yeah, we're going to estimate three hours. Send it to them. They could agree and prepay for the three hours right there on the spot pretty much while we're still talking it happens so quickly and then we can go on and, and do the work it exactly is beautiful uh, i completely agree and i think this is we just asked ourselves like what how do you conduct business you meet with a client and then normally like you need to hit the higher and while it's hot kind of thing and then if you we want to serve so a lot of people, you know, start working, like they jump, they want to start working. And that eagerness while being good, sometimes keep them uh, vulnerable because, you know, then it's not agreed upon and, or the agreement was not in place in the due time because it's, it's hard work. It's annoying. It's like the grindy stuff that we don't like to do, but we have to do it because it protects us. So we wanted to lower that to the bare minimum and everything that you do repeatedly will become templated so you can like really really easily choose and not only with you know a new client let's say as you said like there's, there's something you just chose to add there's a one button add choose a client how much money and then it sends them exactly what you talked about then the minute he clicks approve it's becoming part of the binding agreement and then will later be issued at the invoice yeah, no, exactly. And and it does happen so easy because you're right. If we talk to somebody now and we're like, okay, I'll get that sent up to you sometime in the next day or so, you know, you send it out, that client has now gotten busy as opposed to using your system where we just hit send, you know what, I'll send that now, you approve it now, we can get started right away. So, you know, it, it's beautiful with that. So let's jump into these questions here. So we've got, so Sherry Lee has said, first off, um, and by the way, she's one of the people that um, the very first person who has, and she also has purple hair, um, you'll meet her in Vegas, um, that would like to do some testing for the Canadians. And she is an amazing tester and has a super, super power to look at things in a very unique way. She's my work spouse as well, for anybody who doesn't know. And we talk quite a bit. So she's got a ton of questions. She's been looking forward to this. So she's saying, so your superpower at Anchor is that um, over other payment softwares is you've got a lack of dial -a -sados or data silos. Is that correct? 
so yes we're actually breaking through those instead of normally as you mentioned you have a lot of like your proposal is sitting in one place your invoices is sitting in another place the invoice reminder can sit in another place the dunning emails the payment is another service provider the you know the gl is something completely else and when you're trying to put it all together and this is if you're a very advanced and you have all the pieces of software you're still ending up working quite a bit to make that and then the data itself, even if you're using Zapier, a lot of time the field, this field doesn't match this field. So you need to, okay, so everything's automated apart from, wow, I need that. So you still need to validate everything. And those silos definitely are what's creating errors and they're creating the manual work and your lack of ability to trust your own process and need to like keep you know your hands on, on top of it. So we just said, let's create the full process where we're in charge and we can reconcile with 100% accuracy because we're generating the payment ask, we're gen generating the payment collection, we're, we're actually facilitating the payment to your account, so we know everything in, in, in the way. And you, you're, uh, you have eyes during the month when you send a proposal, you see, okay, they received the proposal, they signed it, okay, they're paying. Where is the my money? When is it coming? So you're not in the blind around anything that revolves about you getting paid. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So Sherry Lee's next question is, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so how does paying the client? So and I will answer this because Omri, this is something you wouldn't be aware of. So how does paying the client, having the client pay the credit card fee work with the new Canadian legislation? of a max charge of 2.4%. So you're not in Canada, but once we get to in Canada, there's different legislation. So only as of October the 6th, have we been allowed to pass that charge along to our clients and there is a max of 2.4%. So that's something that we'll make sure when we work with this is built into all of that. So definitely, and I think that there's a very easy solution to that. Even if the cost is 2.9, they can still take the 2.4. It's less than what you're normally paying, which is the 2.9 or everything. So we can definitely create a solution that you can do part of it or all of it or lower. So this is the first solution that comes to mind. That is a very easy development. Um, Everything has like if, if we talk and we understand what's you know what's needed, it sounds like it's a lot easier than what uh, I anticipated. Yeah, no, it's I'm sure I'm sure that part of it will be. Um, I think the worst part of it will be bringing in the invoices with our tax. And Sherry Lee is someone that you want to be working with when it comes down to that because she is in one of the provinces. We have some provinces that just have a federal tax and the, they break it down. It's a harmonized sales tax and then some that have both the federal and the provincial and every province has, you know, different tax codes in there and whatnot. So that'll be the most complex. Um, but again, we got Sherry Lee that you get to work with on that. So we have amazing programmers and amazing product people. They'll, you know, they'll solve, they'll solve it. Exactly. There we go. Okay. So then Sherry Lee's also said here that revenue leakage and, um, and the updating the, that fee annually, does it send a notification reminder to the client so that they remember there will be an increase? So naturally you can decide as a vendor per client, per agreement, how will it behave? Uh, because there's what we've discovered is that there's a lot of even differences with, you know, the, clients some of them are elderly so they want you know that they, they're fearful of new things so we wanted to enable you per agreement to decide how it behaves so with reminders with everything you have that in the definitions of how does it behave so definitely reminders are coming uh but you can control those you can say okay i want to or i don't want to uh per per agreement so you have full control over that perfect Okay. And then, so Sherry Lee has got final. So if it's using Stripe to collect, are we paying um, both Stripe fees and anchor fees? No, there's no merchant fees. There's nothing on top of it. Uh, it's just the $5 flat. You don't need a merchant account. You don't need any other software. Like it's just the $5 and it encompasses everything. Yeah. Because when we sign up, 
we go through the KYC with you. So you're collecting all of that. You are making sure that you know us and that you've got our information. So you're right. And, and that's actually a great point. We're not going through and signing up with you and then signing up with Stripe. We sign up with you. You take care of all of that. Um, and that pulls in. And then, of course, that's where the clients are paying that 2.9% in the for, in the U.S. They're paying. The exactly. Tax. So uh, exactly right. And moving forward, I think we'll be able to optimize that as well. You know, having the fact that we have rapid uh, as a potential backbone to everything, uh, we'll be able to optimize pricing and optimize the speed that you're being paid. So these are things that are very important for us to make sure that you're paying as little as possible and you're getting paid as fast as possible. These are the two aspects that drive us. No, awesome. Okay, so um, we've got some questions here or some comments from Bori. And if I can let you answer and then I can answer what my thoughts are as well so she can hear from both of us. So Bori has said that you may wanna consider a pricing strategy. For example, 1% of the price collected up to max of five if you wanna attract more small businesses. Just as example from her, a payment of $150 to $200, $5 would not work well in budgeting. So what would your response to that be? And then I can go in and say what my thoughts are on that from the pricing perspective. So we consider that definitely, uh, but then it, it added complexity. Then you add tiers and all of a sudden, instead of having something that's very, very focused and simple and and is across the board you were having tiers and packages and that it, it let us you know because on the other side you can say okay but what happens if you have a three thousand dollars invoice or ten thousand dollars so that you know people look at it and say wow just five dollars for that normally i pay a percentage so we tried to find what would be the minimum that will cover both ends and will still make sense uh, but i think you know we're very open to these suggestions and i'd love to hear the tier structure that she thought of well, and, and you know what, that's interesting. And it's funny, I used to think that way. So my response to that, to Bori, would be, first off, if you take a look, again, look at your dollar cost averaging, right? If we work all of that out, if you've got somebody who pays $1,000, if you had paid that basically on the tier structure, even looking at the 2.9% of a credit card fee for the merchant services, that would cost $29. You're only paying five. So therefore that offsets the cost of your client who's paying 150 to 200 dollars so maybe you know internally you could do some type of pricing like that if you wanted i'm going to um to kind of take a step out and take a, a, a i guess discuss what ron baker's been talking about for anybody who's seen ron speak in the last um, couple of years even just before COVID, he started on this and he's been talking about subscription pricing so that is the next step to value pricing is subscription pricing. So from subscription pricing, you can have tiers or you don't have to have tiers. It can just be flat fee. This is what it covers because again, looking at your dollar cost averaging theory, it's going to balance out. That's kind of the way that I look with at this. And also it's easy for me to work in a $5 to say, okay, it's $155 instead of 150. Or maybe for my internal pricing, I want to charge $10 to everybody who's paid $50 or, you know, $500 or over, and then give my smaller clients, you know, that opportunity that it's, that they're not paying that. So there's different, definitely different things that we can do internally without hitting the complexity at your side. And that's one thing that I wanted to make sure to point out that you're right, that $1,000, that $3,000 client is going to definitely pay more. We've got three clients that are, you know, $1,500 a month or more they're offsetting the difference for the other clients, most definitely for, for some of our small ones. So those are my thoughts on that. Um, if, if we're putting, so it's great thoughts and I completely agree. If we're putting in the calculation of the alternatives, then this is the most ROI decision you probably have done in your business because it's apart from the fact that you don't need a lot of other software potentially that you're using and that's you know their monthly cost, the if you take you know if you actually put a dollar uh amount on the amount of time that you spent on these things that are no longer about the late payments late payments you know they have a cost and that if you actually put that into account uh the revenue leakage that you put in 
if you put all that and actually we're actually building a calculator to help you do that to see you know what's the ROI that you should expect on anchor uh, then it's massive uh, and I'm not talking about you know our desire that it will make you two years younger without the stress and you know friction with clients and then this mayhem of billing uh, but on, just on top of that I think the ROI is immediate uh, is really really immediate well, and I think when we look at the revenue leakage, take a look at that, that alone will end up by the time you hit your year will end up paying for itself, even if you don't pass that along to the client and keep that as an operating expense, it will still cover it. You're right. You, you look at the manual time, you look at all of that. So there's definitely a lot of different ways to look at it. I know right now, for example, in my QuickBooks, and yes, again, reminder to um, those Americans, I'm in Canada. So we have just started with the, the credit card um, surcharge, being able to put that to the client. I have to manually calculate that and add that in. And again, have to make sure it's accurate to be able to put that into the invoice because QuickBooks doesn't have that, that automatically pulls that out as, as the percentage to put that. We have to show it separate on the invoice so the client knows that they're paying that. So that alone, again, is left room for error. We've actually come up with an internal calculator on a spreadsheet, but now I have to take the time to log into it or for Leanne, whatever, for quoting different things. Again, and it's a percentage. I personally love the flat fee. I love it. So, um, okay, so we've got some more questions here. So um, this has come from an anonymous user. I think I know who it is because there's one person on the call that I know is definitely a Sage 50 desktop person. Hi, Lynn. Um, so she would like to know, is there an opportunity to export from Anchor and import into Sage 50 desktop? Or let's say there's people that are using QB uh, QuickBooks desktop yes. or Zero or any other software. Is there an export function? So it's a great question and definitely all of these uh, are on the roadmap. We chose to start with uh, QuickBooks, uh, both online and desktop, uh, due to the fact that that's the biggest need that we see and they have the largest market share. Uh, so it will service more people, but moving forward, we want to cover all of them. Now, there is a workaround right now okay. um, in the fact that I can export a CSV. Okay, so that's winner, easy. And I hit to export a CSV. So therefore, it doesn't have to be a direct automation to anything yet. There is a way now that you go in and you export the CSV. So I've already been thinking internally, how am I going to, you know, start using this? And then again, when it's in Canada, how are we going to set this up and start to get our clients on this? And how are they going to be using all of that as best as possible? And my thought was exactly, I think what we've discussed that you kind of do in the back end. Payments yes. go to an anchor clearing account. I export the detail listing, whether it be weekly or monthly or, you know, whatever, I would at least pull it out once a month, but it then has one line in every, on every, um, one line for every invoice, export, import that into the software and boom, it's done. It's right there. That creates the new sales receipt, which then match up with your clearing account. Like it's beautiful. So that, that's easy. So yeah, I mean, considering, uh, a CSV, that will be very, very easy. And more than that, I think the fact that we have the ability to bulk upload clients, if you have, you don't need to upload clients one by one, you're able to just take it like, you know, after you validate everything and you test things, you don't need to work hard to bring your business over. Uh, so that's a big part of what we've worked on. So it will be frictionless. As, yeah. as much as possible. Absolutely. But there, I love the fact that there's already that in there, the mm -hmm. CSV, just in case I'm working with something, you know, that's not that you've already got that built in, which is great. So there is a way currently just not an automated, not an automated way yet. No. So that's awesome. So Sherry Lee has another question is how fast are the funds deposited? 
is there a five-day hold back like others? And again, that could be a Canadian versus, you know, a U.S. thing that may slightly change um, in Canada. But based on your knowledge now, what would be your answer to that? So if it's being paid by a credit card, it's uh, between one and two business days. Uh, if it's uh, an ACH, currently it's up to seven business days. But, and this is where it's you know, we have control over it. We're looking forward to expediting this dramatically. So we're working on uh, a next day ACH transfer, and we're going to have dynamic payments, which is if you want to accelerate a payment or your client wants to delay a payment, we'll have a button on that ability. Okay, pay me now. Let's say even if you have a an invoice that is net 30 and you want to be paid now. So for a percentage lower than a credit card fee, we'll be able to pay you immediately and then charge your client down the line or your client, you know, for any reason owes you money today and needs some help with that. He can say, pay my vendor and we will pay you and then charge him less, again, less than a credit card percentage. Uh, so we can facilitate that even faster. Uh, as I said, like the two main things for us is how much you're paying for that and, you know, in the speed that in which you're being paid. So there are ACH as a whole, it's a network that basically all the checks are running on a, the ACH network and there's built in delays in that. And right now there have two new solutions that we're trying to basically innovate around them uh, to make that a lot faster and still keep it free. Uh, so that's yet to come, I think, in the new exciting new features. But right now it is two days for a credit card, uh, five to seven days uh, for an ACH. And still, if you look into how much right now it takes until you have the money actually in the account, if you're calculating the speed that you invoice and everything, it still shaves off money to the bank from invoicing to paid. It shaves it off, but our standard is to, you know, we're striving to immediate. Absolutely. And I think the one thing just to, to, to keep in mind for the Canadians, there are certain things that will have to be followed that I'm sure there's something similar in the States, um, but our Canadian Payment Association has laws around the funding. So things are five days because that's that's the it has to move into one account you have to make sure that the funds are guaranteed before they move to another there's money laundering um laws taken into account for that which is kind of why there's the timing so if you do one of your solutions that you were saying that you can pay or receive the money sooner for that extra fee that would essentially be you funding it Right. Is that we just want to make sure that that's clear yes. that you're funding it in True. advance of pulling it. So that's where that extra fee comes from, because you guys True. would actually be funding it. Right. We're funding it, but we're not touching a credit score or anything. It's right. like trade receivables. It's just because we know that the client is due to pay it. He has an obligation to pay you. We're just accelerating that payment. So we're right. funding that. But uh but yes and that's where that extra fee would come from so it's not you guys being mean it's hey oh, no, you're no, funding it you're funding it so it just makes sense and that's how i wanted to make sure that 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 was oh yeah, yeah. Everybody out there that yes you're funding so essentially it's like a a temporary you know couple of day accounts receivable loan type of thing it, it could be a couple of days or it could be even be depends like 30 or 60 days depending on if someone oh, is doing right. you know net payments and stuff like that Okay, so that actually brings, so when that comes out, that actually brings yet another option to the, yeah, there's another app. So now you guys are like five or six apps all rolled into one. <laughs> I like that. Um, so a couple of last questions here. So is the timeline on Sage 50. So do you have any idea what that current timeline would be or? Uh, the desire is to do it all uh in the next three quarters okay. however uh i don't want to commit and disappoint anyone uh they'll need to stay you know updated and i'd love to take her email and then keep her personally updated on this uh but i don't want to promise stuff and then disappoint but it's definitely on the roadmap uh but i don't have a timeline for sage sorry for that 
Well, when we send out the recording for this and when we upload it on YouTube, we'll also have a link where you can connect for, you know, a demo or for any further questions um, to keep updated on these timelines. So if you want, you know, for Anchor or Omri to have your email address to, to keep you updated on that, absolutely it'll be there. If you're in the U.S. or in Canada, billing U.S. clients, you know, all of that stuff works great now. So absolutely, we'll, we'll make sure that we can connect. Um, and then, so Lynn's asking the anchor fee, is it pulled from the account at the time of each payment or is it pulled once a month? It's not pulled at all. Uh, meaning that when you receive the money, it's being deducted from the actual fee. So let's say the invoice, you invoice uh, the system invoice automatically your client for a thousand dollars, then we will send uh, to or transfer to your account 995. And right. then you have a listing, so it's easy to reconcile that fee, but we're not taking it from the account. Like it's just, it already arrives. Uh, with so that. what's deposited is the net instead versus yes. the gross and then the fee pulled. Yeah. And that's exactly, exactly why, you know, my plan is to use a clearing account, which we do whenever we have square payments or anything that is like that. Um, we use the clearing account because then that way, we can pull that out. We know the net's going to go in. It won't match with the bank feeds, but it'll all match and reconcile beautifully in the clearing account. True. Okay, perfect. Okay, and then the last question that we have here is um, from Lynn. Currently, her credit card backend is Moneris and the funds arrive in the bank account within 24 hours of the next business day. So I will comment on that because I do know around that we've used them. That is, they actually, Moneris has, I wanna say, I think they're TD, backing them and they actually have technology to process faster. It's the five days for payment is essentially um, the ACH or the, you know, if we're using Retessa or anything to do a direct debit dealing with cash. Credit card is, you say much faster, one to three days, depending on the time. Yeah, it depends. Correct? And debit cards is immediate is one day. Oh, debit card is one day. Okay. Yeah. So it just depends on all of that, um, you know, with all of that. But again, this is strike processing it. So you yes. are using, unless you're choosing to use it faster for that fee and funding it, you're 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 just using the same the same um, delays that Stripe has with anybody else. Here, I have a question, maybe to the community uh, or people listening, if this is something that they would like. Uh, a part of the plan is, what is the most important aspect? Because uh, this is something that we're asking at large. Is it to know? that you receive the funds that it's secured or it's actually having the money in the bank as fast as possible because we're able to indicate much sooner that the payment is safe it's yours it's just on the way uh so like when you need to like look at the average the more important thing or the most important is like okay this is cash i need to actually allocate i need it in my bank account or i it's critical for me to like know that it's done, you know, it's being paid, it's mine. Well, I think this comes down to budgeting and I know we've gone three minutes over, so I'll answer this real quickly here and thanks to everybody who's sticking around. Um, but I think this is budgeting, a budgeting thing. I offer clients to pay on the 1st and the 15th. I know that money's gonna hit my bank account on the 5th and the 20th, unless there's a weekend, then maybe it's the 7th and, you know, and, and the 22nd type of thing. But I know I've got money coming in here. You can set it up that you can pick the date. So if you want the money on the 15th, you can say it's due on the 10th. So that way it gives, gets into your bank account by the 15th. That flexibility is there though, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. So it works with whatever your budget is. Um, it just may, yeah. And so Lynn is respond both to ensure cash flow. And Lynn, I think that just comes up to the planning when you're doing it and, and sending it out. As long as you know, again, you just, here's the date. And, and I have twice a month, again, twice a month, I've got money coming in every two weeks or well, twice a month, I've got money coming in to pay everything. So that's, that, that's, I think, uh, you know, an entrepreneur's budgeting thing. So, Thank you. And the source, we can absolutely talk about that. And if there's any questions, we will be back. And it is on November the, I'm looking it up. I wish I had it handy. Maybe okay. Lee. So there you are, Lee. Thank you. You can come on. It is November the 24th. That is a Thursday um, at 1 p.m. Eastern time so that uh, people know we did send out anyone who's on our newsletter the first of the month newsletter had this 
Plus all the rest of the webinars happening this month. There's four in total this month. So this is one of four. Um, otherwise, I will be following up with direct emails on that one. And then, of course, watch our social channels um, because I have posted on both Bookkeepers Corner and Tanya's Bookkeepers Bootcamp Facebook page, as well as Twitter, Instagram, and other ones. But those are, I know that's the common ones where people find us. So, so And then, something... of course, it will be recorded and it will be yes. on our YouTube channel and sent out. So as long as you've registered or know where our YouTube channel is, you can always find it and we will have all of anchors, um, contact information, demo information, all of that will automatically be at the YouTube channel and in the emails and everything. And so you'll know where to, you'll know. And, and I invite everybody to really just give it a go. Uh, see if it works for you. And uh, we're very accommodating to trying it out. So it's sayanchor.com, you register and more than that, uh, but, but you'll have the link uh, in the email. So that's easy, but we'll, we'll love to help. No, that's absolutely awesome. So thank you so much, um, Omri, for, for taking the time to come today. I am very excited and um, I can't wait till we can use this on all of our Canadian people um, as well as the U.S. But yeah, I was really excited when I got in this weekend and there was a few other things I just wanted to tweak and get back in later this week to do some more with it. Thank you very much to everybody who has taken the time to watch this, whether you're watching it live or whether you're watching one of the recordings. And please, please, you know, um, keep watching. And you know what? I do suggest that you really look out. And yes, I am very excited. My excitement, I'm keeping it down because sometimes Tanya overexcited can be a little too much for people. And I didn't want to hit some of you in, on the West Coast with, you know, Tanya's over exuberance that early in the morning. But it really, truly is exciting. Huge time saver, beautiful flow and a huge, huge problem solver. Um, pain point solver. So thank you so much for um, founding this um, or co-founding this Omri. And thank you so much for your time. And we will talk to you soon. Thank you for having me. It's All a right. pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Bye everybody. Bye-bye.